like to call to order this regular meeting on the Lennox Township Board of Trustees, Monday, October 3rd, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval meeting agenda. We have one change to the agenda. Item number 13 is going to be item number 14 because we're going to insert closed session to discuss attorney client privilege information under number 13. I make a motion that we approve the agenda for the addition of the closed session. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Gurley, seconded by Treasurer Hommel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Approval of minutes. Make a motion we approve the minutes of September 6, 2022, second. as written. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Clifford, seconded by Court Candell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, public announcements, Mr. White. Thank you, Mr. Reader, members of the board. Just a couple quick announcements. Just a reminder that our uh, fire department open house will be held on the 9th of October. That's a Sunday. Please come by. Um, and join us for, you know, uh, we usually have the hot dogs and food and pop there, uh, see the vehicles. Uh, we welcome the public to come out and join us that day. The uh, other the other mention is just that the uh, Macomb County Public Transportation Millage, commonly known as SMART, is on the upcoming uh, ballot for renewal. This, is a, this was a renewal millage, it is not an increase, actually it's a few hundreds of a, of a mill decrease uh, over over prior years. This is, uh, funding is used not only by you know the large buses, which I think is what people associate it with more often, most often, but the small shuttle buses that we operate here in our community. They're operated for medical appointments. They take people to work. Uh, we have a service that takes people to the airport. Um, we have a service that uh, that operates on demand, which means you can call same day, almost Uber like, uh, to to receive transportation. And uh, those services are funded uh, directly through this millage. Uh, we don't tell people how to vote on things. We tell people the services we provide uh, and what they do for our community. When we started this in 1999, we didn't think this was, um, we didn't know how big it would become. Uh, last year, we transported about 24,000 people uh, on this service. For those of you that uh, received COVID vaccines at the EMS building on 32 Mile Road. Uh, much of that was funded through money we were able to, that, that the state allows us to use from SMART to do scheduling and transporting of people there uh, to get those kind of things done. It's been very well used uh, here in our community. So we just want people to know it's there. I think the most important thing I can say to everybody is, is people keep saying to me, geez, uh, Jeff, you've been around a long time. We've never seen you come at anything without, a, without another plan. There is no other plan. There is no plan B. There is no funding if this village fails. If people wake up on October 9th and SMART has failed in Macomb County, I will, that morning, my task will be to begin dismantling the service as quickly as we can because there will not be any further funds to pay for it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <coughs> Public comment. All right. Consent agenda. All items listed under this consent agenda are considered routine by the Township Board. It will be enacted by one motion. According to established Township meeting rules, there will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the Board or public so requests act or prior to the meeting, in which event the Chair of the meeting may remove such items from the consent agenda for discussion and consideration under agenda item number eight below. 
Approval of the consent agenda shall be by majority roll call vote. Those present here. Um, let's see. I have all the items on my agenda. Um, Councilor Ramirez? Yes. Councilor Ramirez? Yes. Councilor Ramirez? Yes. Councilor Ramirez? Yes. I will make a motion we approve the consent agenda with orders and bills in the amount of $807,792.92. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Hano, seconded by Trustee Gurley. Madam Deputy Clerk, please call the roll. Hano? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Reader? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Kendall? Aye. Is your
I have a motion by Trustee Clifford, seconded by Treasurer Hollow. Trader Deputy Clerk, please call the roll. Clifford? Aye. Honnold? Aye. Kendall? Aye. Reader? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Item D, Fire Department Station 1, door for the frame replacement. Mr. White. Good evening. Uh, again, Mr. Supervisor, members of the board, tonight you have in front of you a quote to replace the uh, frames around the fire departments of Station Number One. Station Number One was constructed in 1989, uh, so that building is, uh, believe it or not, is as good as it looks, kind of from the road. It's about 33 years old, and it's just starting to have some 33-year-old building issues. If you were to look around the bottom of each of the doors. Uh, you will see that the steel door frame around them has basically rusted away. It's just from small salt getting there and corroding it away in the winter time. Um, we, uh, uh, Cam Tromley, our assistant chief and, and DPW director, struggled to find anybody who would even take the job on because uh, it's a, a bit of a complex job uh, that requires specialized equipment. We were finally able to get a bid from citywide door in the amount of $7,525, which uh, will replace the, the corrosion around all of the doors uh, there at the fire hall. The, uh, we did uh, plan for that in the budget and are requesting that the township board allow us to move ahead with that repair. I'll make a motion that we approve citywide door to fix the overhead doors at the fire department at 59950 Gratiot in the amount of $7,525. Second. I have a motion by Court Kandow, seconded by Trustee Gurley. May the Deputy Clerk please call the roll. Kandow? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Hano? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Reader? Aye. Item E, Fire Department Station 1, Concrete Scale Cut-Up Replacement. So, uh, just so everybody understands, this is not a fire department project. It's in front of the fire station. So this project uh, is basically in front of the fire station many years ago. Um, there were cutouts placed there where motor carrier enforcement officers place scales so that when they uh, pull over trucks that appear to be overweight, uh, they can actually weigh down and, and, and these cutouts in the cement need to need to fit the scale properly. They're kind of just a rectangular cement cut-up would be the best way to describe it. Um, we have motor carrier enforcement, uh, enforcement out here in the township. He is efforting to use those uh, scales on a couple of occasions. The scales, just because they've been plowed over and driven over and so on, uh, the, those scale cutouts have just deteriorated away. There's just no lip on them anymore. If you imagine just a cut-out rectangular spot in the ground. Um, we, uh, I, I went out there and took a look with our township engineer. He actually took a ride out to uh, I-94 where they had the old uh, way station out there. If you remember the days the way stations existed, looked, what they, looked at what they had out there. And then, you know, did a, a, a brief design of a cutout. Um, and again, similarly, uh, we did this all in the spring-ish of this year, and it's taken us pretty well all summer to find a contractor who would do a job that is big, this small. Um, the bid to uh, replace those cutouts for our motor carrier enforcement officer is, uh, is $5,000. I will tell you, um, public safety should never be in the business of, of doing something because it creates revenue. But I can tell you that based on the revenue generation we're seeing from this particular motor carrier enforcer that we have here in the community now. Our roads, I believe, are probably safer. We'll never know the accident we prevent. But with somebody out there that's doing this kind of work every day, um, stopping trucks that are, that are, you know, unsafe, overweight, or speeding, um, certainly I think benefits our, our residents. And so this, this $5,000 cost would be a cost that would come from the townships general fund 
versus the, the fire department. Because, like I say, in fact, this isn't a fire department direct project. This is a, a township public safety project. And we are requesting, uh, our, our motor carrier enforcement, in, enforcement officer and I are requesting uh, the expenditure of this $5,000 to um, correct those cutouts. I make a motion that we accept the bid of D and J contractors to replace or repair and bring up to code the existing cutouts in front of the uh, current fire station on the pavement. A second. I have a motion by Trustee Clifford, seconded by Treasurer Howard. Would the deputy clerk please call the roll? Clifford? Aye. Aye. Curly? Aye. Kendall? Aye. All right. Item F, Richmond Lakes Ambulance Authority Finance Proposal. Mr. White. Yeah, so this, uh, I come to you as, uh, as the head of the, uh, the jointly owned Richmond uh, and Lenox Township Ambulance Authority. Our intent is to build a fourth station up in the Memphis, Michigan area. Um, we were able to actually secure a uh, a building and piece of property there uh, that is um, suitable for our use. We the, the township of Riley, which is a township there, helped us to get that uh, building for about fifty thousand dollars from a tax sale kind of situation. So they've done their best to contribute as they're able uh, in this regard. Um, Tonight we come before the township to suggest, as we've done in the past, that we, uh, the ambulance authority, which again is jointly owned by your community in Richmond, uh, consider uh, loaning to the ambulance authority a sum of uh, what is eight hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars to build an additional station. This station, not just um, indirectly, but directly benefits the, the citizens of Lenox Township. It means that we're not sending our resources from here uh, into that area to, um, to, to serve uh, those areas that are under contract with the authority. The other thing that it does for Lenox Township, and again, um, I'd like to talk about public safety better than money, but there is any commercial bank in the world, uh, in this area, I, I should say, maybe not in the world, but certainly in this area, that will loan the EMS the money for this. Borrowing it from the township uh, makes good sense because the township then reaps the benefits of those uh, of those interest payments. We pay interest back to the township. We pay that rate at a far higher rate than what the township receives on current CDs or any, anywhere else that can legally invest its money. The township can legally invest its money uh, in the EMS, and the township will receive about I, I think about seventeen thousand dollars a year. If I did my math correctly in interest payments. Uh, for this loan. So like I say, a, a commercial bank would certainly take, take this money, but if we can give it back to the community that owns the ambulance authority, that certainly makes better sense to me uh, as, as your chief of that organization. Before you tonight is both a security agreement and a promissory note. Uh, these, these notes were initially drafted because we've done this before with capital projects at the EMS. They were initially drafted by uh, our legal counsel uh, here for the township. Uh, legal counsel and I have gone over the documents again just as a, a reminder because uh, you know everybody has to look at a lot of written pieces of paper every day. Sorry, that sounds really kind of funny. <laughs> um, the, um, so they're, uh, uh, they're looking, uh, they're, they're, he's looked at that. Uh, we are both uh, in agreements uh, to the contract language and recommend that the uh, Township of Lenox approve the security agreement and the promissory note. Um, for this uh, for this loan uh, this evening. Looking at number two on the promissory note, I just it just spoke to me here. It has a notation about identifying all final vehicle specifications. I think that might be. You know what? Uh, what I can do is I can correct that little bit of language, and, yeah, and yeah. we can uh, just change that to a building. Again, we've used this same uh, document before, so it's a, a bit of cut and paste. And the last time we used it was probably for an actual ambulance and not a building. So I, I can make, I, I can make that correction and yeah. get a, a copy back for the supervisor to sign. Okay, no problem.
I would like to make a motion that the township enter into an agreement with Lenox Township EMS, Richmond Lenox, Lenox EMS, uh, in the amount of $850,000 for the um, renovation of the building in Riley. I'll second. I have a motion by Court Candell, seconded by Treasurer Honnold. In the deputy clerk, please call the roll. Candell? Aye. Honnold? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Reader? Aye. Clifford? Aye. All right, item G, not use non-NFPA compliant fire equipment disposal. So in the fire service, uh, they, they follow a NFPA guideline for, for equipment, uh, things like helmets and uh, the air packs they wear, you require, you recall we replaced last year, they age out. They're no longer uh, suitable for, for use in our environment. The NFPA, which is the National Fire Protection Association, has some waivers, for lack of a better way to put it, for communities that are impoverished or kind of super or highly poor. There is a, uh, a board up company, a company that comes in after disasters, uh, that is in this area of Michigan uh, called Belfort. And they have a program uh, by where they take uh, this used equipment from fire departments and they arrange to have it delivered to fire departments up in Michigan's Upper Peninsula for the most part. But northern Michigan and Michigan's Upper Peninsula in areas where fire departments might be operating with very old fire trucks with in some cases they, they share with me no air packs um, or, or very old fire helmets, uh, things that we would normally just discard. Um, because these are still assets of the township before I would dispose of any of them, uh, I would want uh, your approval to do so. Uh, I worked with uh, Chief Hartway, uh, who thought this was a good idea as well, because we're, we're kind of on some of our fire buildings, and we run out of room to store these things. Uh, so our, our options really uh, come down to either putting them in a landfill or, you know, finding a good use for them. This seems to be a very good use for them, uh, in, in, in my opinion, if we can help uh, some folks less fortunate from a funding and other, and other perspective uh, up uh, in Minstream's North Country, where a lot of us like to, um, you know, spend time and weekends here. Uh, I think that is very worthwhile, and it's what we would never get used uh, for any purpose at Lennox Township in my discussion with the Chief. So the recommendation is that we uh, are actually turning would turn over to Balfour for distribution uh, 18 uh, SCBA air pack harnesses, 47 SCBA air bottles, 14 air masks, and seven helmets. And that is our uh, recommendation to to, uh, to donate uh, that uh, that decommissioned fire equipment. I make a motion that we approve the donation of the used non-NFPA compliant fire equipment which has been decommissioned to Belfort for redistribution and use. Second. I have a motion by Clerk Candell, seconded by Trustee Gurley. Good Deputy Clerk, please call the roll. Candell? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Connell? Aye. Reader. Aye. Thank you. I think that concludes my items this evening. All right. Item H, Macomb County Drain Maintenance Match Program. Mr. Trump. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Uh, you may recall last month um, I stood up here and asked uh, for a reallocation as well as uh, some more funds for our drain maintenance program. Um, that is a matching program with the County Public Works. Um, they did uh, supply me with a proposal um, kind of to expand on what we talked about last month for the Ray Lennox drain work in Lennox Township. Um, they're talking about doing an area from the border of Ray and Lennox all the way to New Haven Road. Um, well, it eludes me the, the footage, but it was uh, 3,650 feet was the estimated footage of this project. 
uh, at a cost of $18,700. Our portion of this project would be $6,700. Uh, so I'm here asking for approval um, to allow the county to move forward to do this bank clean out at a cost to Lennox Township of $6,700. I make a motion we accept the grain maintenance match program proposal put forth by uh, the Macomb County Public Works Commissioner of the Grain Office. Uh, just one question, well, I should ask it before. I make a motion, uh, I'm just curious to know who the grain maintenance team was. Uh, it looks like um, we're going to use a, a contractor called Cross Brothers. It's on that front cover. It would be uh, three quarters of the way down on the front page. Solicited under contractor. I know it's Cross Brothers, but do, do they have a regular crew that works for the Grain Commission camp? This this is their contractor that's been doing the work, to my knowledge. They okay. they used to have a gentleman pre-COVID. Unfortunately, that that gentleman didn't fare well through COVID, so they they've uh, in turn hired this company and has been working out well, I guess. Uh, I did talk with uh, uh, the Grain Office today. And uh, if they were to gain approval tonight to move forward with this, uh, their plan was to mobilize first thing in the morning to get going with this project because of how well, my, my, my uh, motion remains the same. I recommend approval. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Clifford, second by Clark Candell. And if that would be please call the roll. Clifford? Aye. Candell? Aye. Reader? Aye. Connell? Curly. Aye. Item I, new DPW hire proposal. Mr. Trump. Uh, again, uh, last month I, uh, I requested to uh, advertise uh, for an additional assistant. Uh, as you may recall, we, uh, we lost uh, John Olofsky. Um, that did a great job for us for the last five years. Um, so we did put an ad in paper. Uh, I did receive uh, six applications. Um, three of them really didn't have any work experience and I don't believe they understood what the position was um, given what their prior work experience was. But we did interview three different individuals um, and uh, after the, the in-person uh, interview and, and doing some background checks on a couple of the candidates, we, uh, I, I would make a recommendation that we hire um, Vincent Cass uh, for the full-time position. Um, he, was, uh, he does live locally. Uh, he does have prior experience uh, with the type of work we do. Uh, I do believe he would be a great fit. Um, and uh, seems uh, excited about the position as well as uh, learning um, more about the, the water and sewer systems and so forth. Second. I'd like to make a motion that we approve <clears throat> the hiring of Vincent Cass at an hourly rate of $17 an hour is proposed by DPW Superintendent Cam Trombley. I'll second. I have a motion by Trustee Gurley, second by Trisha Hall. My deputy clerk, please call the roll. Gurley? Aye. Hanel? Aye. Reader? Aye. Kandel? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Item J, Hockey Corp Joint Ceiling. Mr. Trombley. Uh, this, uh, this was kind of a last minute uh, thing. Uh, you know, we're starting to really start to look towards uh, uh, end of year things um, with the change in weather. Um, and uh, this was one of the things that we were looking at, uh, hoping that we get uh, weather that cooperates enough to try for a ice skate rink again this year. Uh, last few years, the weather is not very cooperative. We get a few cold days and then we get a warm up. And it's very hard to, uh, create ice uh, in that kind of time period. Um, with that being said, after uh, inspecting the ice rink with our township engineer, Mr. Safe, uh, we've noticed a lot of uh, expansion cracks and so forth, not only in the curbs, but in the asphalt itself. Uh, and I believe it would be very difficult for us to try and retain water in this area to form an ice rink uh, reasonably. So we did contact a, a, a local contractor that we've used in the past for small jobs like this. And uh, he came out, looked at everything, measured uh, the footages that would be required to be filled, um, some multiple times because of the depth. 
uh, and he came back to me with a uh, cost of $2,925 to seal the expanse of cracks within that court area. Uh, you do see there is only one quote on this. Um, again, it's a very small job. Uh, this kind of work is, is kind of specialized, so there's not a lot of guys out there let alone to do a small job. This company has done work for us in the past. They've done very well. Um, they're very responsive, so uh, I, would, I would recommend highly uh, for this position, for this uh, project that we have. I make a motion we have, we approve the proposal by D and J Contracting to fill the joints in the uh, ice skating rink at the cost of two thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars as soon as they can get out. A second. I have a motion by Trustee Clifford, second by Treasurer Hano. Pay the deputy clerk, please call the roll. Clifford? Aye. Hano? Aye. Kendall? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Reader? Aye. And I thank you, and uh, one, one, one last note, uh, the drain maintenance clean out. Once that work, they will be doing uh, photos prior and the, as well as after the work that they'll be supplying to us, so you guys will have first-hand knowledge of what's been done. Thank you very much. Thanks again. Item K, computer server backup power supply purchase request. Uh, we have um, in our ongoing quest to keep our computer equipment up to date and um, expand it because of new hookups and things. I have a request for a um, manageable switch at the cost of 1000 well, I'm sorry, and with shipping added, it's $2,004. That is a switch that holds all, all, all of our computers plug into, and right now we're at our very last. We have no room. If we hire a new person, we have no room to hook your computers into our current system. Approve the purchase of an Aruba Instant on a manageable switch from high tech at the cost of $2,004 as uh, proposed by Clerk Kendall. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Hollins, seconded by Trustee Clifford. Good to have court, please call the roll. Connell? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Kendall? Aye. Reader? Aye. Item L, internet device switch box purchase request. I think I might have gotten those two mixed up. Yeah, they're mixed yeah. up. <laughs> I'm sorry. The second item we're looking for is actually the um, smart backup for the entire system. It's time it needs to be replaced. The cost of that is $2,544. I, I do have a question. Cam, is that... Uh, Cam can answer this probably, or you, Luann, I don't care, but the, uh, is this backup power supply on the generator system? No, I don't think so. The, I mean, I really, I really don't have any knowledge of what the proposal is on your agenda tonight. Uh, I assume it was for downstairs. Yes. Currently have, do yes. We currently have a backup power supply on the, we on the server. We currently think that it is past its manufacturer date, you know, the end date, there, so there's no guarantee that it's going to continue to work. Well, no, I, I know that I usually what, what I've done in, in my yeah. past experience, we put that on the generator system for the building, so it keeps that I would battery think, charging also. What, it, it, if it's what I'm thinking it is, um, down there in the IT room, this would act as a buffer for that 30 seconds where we would lose power versus the generator coming up to full power and taking over. Yeah, but on an extended power theory, we'd want that to uh, continue to run and charge those batteries. The <coughs> extended, I mean, we have the generator, so as soon as we... I know, but that still would have to, you would still be charging the batteries at the same time. That That's a separate... Yeah, whenever there's power supply, it's gonna recharge itself. Okay. So you would just be looking at this to maintain your, your controls for 30 seconds until your standby takes over, as well as that surge buffer, if you will. 
Okay. SEMCOT folks have went out, researched, put together, and this is a cleaning project and a design project, which actually involves three other communities, or three communities all told, excuse me. The city of Chesterfield, Chesterfield Township, excuse me, the village of New Haven, Lenox Township, and also Macomb County. This evening, the supervisor's office is asking for the approval to go ahead and have the Lennox Township portion for a cash match put in of the amount of $2,000. Simcock grant funds was a total of $40,925. Chesterfield Township's match is $3,000. The Village of New Haven is $2,000. Lennox Township is $2,000. Macomb County is $2,075. The cash match program in this total is $9,075. The entire project, all inclusive, was $50,000. The other $40,925 comes from the same cot. This is for the design, clean out, layout for the same cot salt river. Thank you. This particular project, that is correct. This is uh, my understanding that this was the only portion that we would, once you joined SEMCOG, there was a number of projects that they went out and attached to Lennox Township. This particular project was headed up, geared extremely hard by Chesterfield. Chesterfield's actually doing a very large additional project to the Salt River and doing a layout, I believe, I want to say it was canoes? Kayak launch. Kayak launch. Okay. They're doing a kayak launch at the very section of their area. 
So they really have much more to deal. This all the way comes up through Chesterfield, 26 mile, up across over into New Haven, through New Haven, and up our portion. At this point in time, this is the only cost to this program, is the 2000. And by approving this cost, we are not at this time committing ourselves to any other large sums of money. Not this from this yet. project. This project was clearly laid out. Um, the, the additional two th or the two thousand dollar structure that came in was not clearly laid out at the beginning, but came to light once the grant came to fund fruition. Which, of course, all of a sudden there was a matching program in it. Which I've seen this in other sections of communities, and they, they tend to like to make sure the community has a portion of vested interests. So they, of course, put the hooks and claws into the program. I will make a motion that we authorize the expenditure of $2,000 towards the SEMCOG. Uh, Salt River Greenway project. I'll second. I have a motion by Court Candell, seconded by Treasurer Hall. But if Deputy Court, please call for Candell? Aye. Hanel? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Reader? Aye. All right, item O, Recreation Board appointment. Uh, so with all you got this in your emails, I'm nominating Maria Swatowski Swatowski of Lennox Township to fill a vacancy within the Parks and Recreation Committee with the term expiring on December 31st of 2023. Who left their seat? Uh, this is one There's of the an extra seat. It's an extra seat that was still open. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the supervisor's appointment of Maria. Swatowski to fill the vacancy on the Recreation Committee with the term expiring on December 31st, 2023. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Gurley, seconded by Trustee Clifford. May the Deputy Clerk please call the roll. Gurley? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Yandel? Aye. Connell? Aye. Reader? Aye. Item P, Board of Review Appointment. As you all know, um, the Board of Review Chairman, Daniel Glaza, has resigned abruptly. Um, I, am, I have talked this over with alternate member Ron Zemmons, and I believe he is able to do this. Therefore, I am nominating him for the, the vacancy on the Board of Review. Well, are you replacing the alternate? We are. If he moves up, obviously there's yeah. another. We're going to be looking for someone to fill the alternate. We do not have a name at this time. Okay. I make a motion we approve the appointment of Mr. Ron Simmons to fill the uh, seat on the board of review. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Clifford, second by Trustee Gurley. May the deputy clerk please call the roll. Clifford? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Connell? Aye. Reader? Aye. Kendall? Aye. Right. Item Q, Christmas tree transportation quote. So before you um, is a quote for transportation of a 20 to 25 foot Christmas tree. Um, I would first like to thank a member of our Parks and Recreation Committee, Mr. Kent Thompson, who actually was able to get a 20 to 25 foot Christmas tree donated to this township. And attached is this quote to pick up, deliver it, they dig the hole, and there's even the option to install recommended topsoil, mulch, and staking. I'd like to make a motion that we approve no more than $1,500 for the pickup and delivery of the Lennox Township Christmas tree and any optional topsoil mulching or staking that may be necessary. Second. I have a motion by Court Candell, seconded by Trustee Gurley. May the Deputy Court please call the roll. Candell? Aye. Gurley? Aye. Clifford? Aye. Connell? Aye. 
Reader. Aye. Public comment. All right, call from the board. All right, uh, I'd like to take this time to recognize the acts of heroism from two of the employees from the Richmond Heights EMS, paramedic Patrick Fox and emergency medical technician Martin Hartway, who is also the chief of our fire department. They have displayed exceptional heroism in their acts of aiding recovery efforts in Florida in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. These two brave men stepped up and volunteered when the call went out. Since driving to the fort, to Florida in the darkness of the night, these two men have experienced strenuous and demanding conditions in aiding the recovery efforts and providing life-saving medical care. These two hero, heroes will forever deserve our eternal respect, gratitude, and praise for, in their efforts. And if there's no one else, close session. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, go into closed session at 7.15. Second. Oh, yeah. Motion by Clark Candell, seconded by Trustee Gurley. All in favor? Aye. 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 that we pursue the real estate transaction as discussed in closed session. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Clifford, seconded by Trustee Gurley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Adjournment. I make a motion we adjourn at 7.35. Second. I have a motion by Treasurer Honnold, seconded by Trustee Gurley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. We're adjourned.